Hi, my name is Sam Hendrick and I'm from Bentley Systems and you've joined us on the eighth video in the series of 10 on MicroStation Connect Edition, The Basics. In this video, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about placing text and editing text. We're going to talk about placing dimensions and how do we edit the dimension text without dropping it. That's your plus one for the video. And then we're going to talk about cells. How do I place a cell? How do I drop a cell to make changes to it? Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, in this first file we're going to be looking at, we're going to be talking about placing and editing text. So let's go ahead and open up the file. Now you can see in this drawing we have a partially annotated cross-section on the left. Our job is to annotate the cross-section on the right. We are in the drawing workflow. We're going to go to the tab called Annotate. And there's a group called Text. And the icon we're looking for is called Place Text. On our tool settings window, we've got several options. The first one is by origin, which is what we're going to use. This is the most common way to place text. We also have some other options. We have the ability to also place text at an angle. Now in the center, you're going to see the text editor dialog. In the upper left corner is where we would select a text style if we had one available. I'll click here and you can see there are two for me. You may have more or none, but I'm gonna choose style of none. That means just active settings. To the right, we have a number of settings. This is where we choose our font. We could choose our text height. We can also set our justification. My job is to place on the right the words finish grade. So I'm going to click in the text editor. I'm going to type in finish grade. Now, as I move my cursor into the drawing area, you can see I'm dragging the words around. Now, you'll notice that they don't quite match the font and the height of the other word, finish grade. So we're gonna match that. And this was something we've talked about in a prior video. It's holding the Alt key down and doing a data or Alt left click. This matches all the attributes of an element. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down and I'm going to left click on the existing finish grade text. And you can see my text now matches that. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this over here on the right. And I can place it again if I want to, or if I'm done, I hit reset, the right button on my mouse. Now, the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be placing section AA on the right. So a common way to do this is just copy existing text and then edit it. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna to go to our copy element tool. We're gonna to go to home. We're gonna to go to copy. We're gonna select this text and I'm gonna do a data and I'm gonna move it across to the right. Now, where I picked it was in the center. That was its justification point. I wanna place it at the center on the line on the right. To do that, I'm going to use AccuDraw. I'm going to, on my keyboard, hit Enter. This locks me on that axis. You can see as I move my cursor up, now I can slide my cursor to the midpoint of that horizontal line, data, and then reset. Now, I have the text, I need to edit it. So I'm gonna go back to my Annotate tab, and under the text group, we have edit text. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna select the text section B-B, -B, and it comes up in the text editor, and I'm just gonna click and edit to make it section A-A. -A. Now to apply the edits I made, I can just left click data anywhere in the drawing area, and you can see the changes are made. So that's just some basics on doing text, placing text and editing text. So let's go to the next file. So we're gonna to go to File Open. And the next file is gonna be O2, Placing Dimensions. We're gonna be dealing with the same barrier cross section, but we're gonna be doing some dimensions. So you can see I'm still in the Annotate tab from the prior file. We have a group called Dimensions. We've got several different icons. The one I'm gonna start with here is called Dimension Linear. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Now on my tool settings window, there's a number of settings. Location, I'm gonna set this to automatic. What this will do is place the text in the midpoint between the arrowheads. And then I'm also gonna be choosing linear size and I'm going to show basic options. And I wanna make sure that I have association checked because if I have association checked, then as I place my dimensions using AccuSnap, snapping to the elements, 
they're associated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the overall height. So I'm gonna come down to this corner here. I'm gonna find it, do a data. Now, as I move my cursor out, you can see it's beginning to place the dimension. So I'm gonna go to the very top, pick this point, do a data, and then I'm gonna move my cursor to the left and I'm gonna finish up by doing another data. Now you can see it wants to place another dimension. If I wanted to, I could continue, but I don't. So I'm gonna hit reset, right button. Now the next one I'm gonna be doing is down in the lower right corner here. And I'm gonna be measuring the height from this finished grade to the top of this point here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here, do a data. And I'm gonna move my cursor to the top and do another data. And then I move my cursor out to the right. Now you can see the distance there is two and a half inches. So I'm gonna place that by doing a data left click, and then I'm done. I'm gonna hit reset or right click. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is how do I edit the values of the text? So let's say that two and a half inch, that actual height there is something that varies. I wanna replace that with the word varies, but I don't wanna drop the dimension. So I'm going to go back to my text and I'm gonna to go to the edit text tool and I'm gonna select the dimension text. Now you can see in the text editor, there's an asterisk. That asterisk represents the true value of that dimension. I'm going to replace that with the word varies. Again, just like editing on any text, once I'm done, I'm gonna do a data and you can see the word varies replaces that value. Now, if this was to change, and let me demonstrate, I'm in element selection. Because I had association turned on, if I modify these endpoints, you're gonna notice that the dimension changes, but you're gonna see the word varies remains. So I'm gonna click on this point here, rotate my compass to top, and let's just move it up a bit. And you can see the word varies remains there. So I'm gonna do an undo. Now, I'm gonna double click on that text using element selection. This is another shortcut for editing text or dimension text. Now you can see the word varies in there. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna put the asterisk back in, so shift eight, space, and then we're gonna put in parentheses TYP. And we're going to data, left click to accept. So that asterisk can be placed back even after the text has been edited, as long as it's still a dimension. So that's placing a couple of dimensions linear the last one we'll look at here is back on our dimensions. There's an icon here called dimension element. Now this is dependent upon the element that you pick. So if I pick this arc right here, do a data. As I move my cursor out, you can see I'm placing a radial dimension. If I hit reset, if I was to data on the top here, you can see I get a linear dimension. So where I pick, determines what gets dimensioned. So we'll come back down and finish off by putting in a radius there. And we'll put that radius value in, and there it is. Again, that is associated to the element. So if that radius value was to change, that would change. So there's some basics on dimensioning. The next thing we're gonna look at is cells. So let's go to File Open. We're gonna to go to O3, Placing Cells. Okay, so what we have here is an architectural drawing. We're gonna be placing in cells. Cells are basically pre-drawn symbols. They can range anything from furniture to monument points to title blocks to anything you can draw in MicroStation can be made into a cell. Organizations usually have their own cell libraries. Cell libraries are where we store our cells. So we're still in the annotate tab. Here's our cells group. I'm gonna to go to the place active cell. On the tool settings window, and you can see I'm dragging around a cell already. That's because that was an active cell when I saved settings in this file last. So I'm gonna come back up here to my tool settings window. To the right there, you can see browse cells. I'm gonna click on this. This brings up my cell library dialog. This is where I can select, go through existing cells in my cell library, and I can place them in my file. Again, an organization may have one or more cell libraries. So we already have our cell selected. It's our active cell. And as you can see, I'm dragging around this cell now by the center of the table. So I'm gonna place this cell right about here. I'm gonna do a left click, a data, and then I'm gonna move my cursor to the left. And AccuDraw is there willing and waiting 
So I'm gonna make the next one a distance of four feet over, do another left click, and then move it to the left. And AccuDraw remembers the prior distance. So I'm gonna do a third one, and then I'm gonna hit reset. Now these are all one element in MicroStation. If I hover over it, you can see it, it is a cell and it's, MicroStation will treat it as a single element. As an example, if I was to go to my change element attributes, let's go to home and under modify, here's change element attributes. And let's say I was to change color. So if I click on this element, you can see the entire thing changes. So I'm gonna do an undo. Well, what if I wanted to add another chair to this? Well, I couldn't just do that without dropping the cell. So I'm in the home tab. I'm in the groups up here. There's an icon here called drop. If you're an AutoCAD user, they call it explode. We call it drop. What I'm gonna do is take this element, this cell, and I'm gonna reduce it down into its simpler components, basically arcs and lines. So I'm gonna left click or data on it. And now you can see as I hover over it, it treats it as a individual element. What I wanna do here is I want to be able to add another chair onto this table over to the left. So what I'm gonna be doing is doing a rotate, but I'm gonna be making a copy at the same time. So on the manipulate group, I'm gonna to go to rotate, on the tool settings window, I've got it set to active angle and the active angle is 90 and I've also checked copies. So now I need to just select what I wanna copy. So I'm gonna hold the left button down, select just what I wanted. I'm gonna copy it about the center here. And then as I move my cursor around, you see it's looking for that center at the center of the table. I do another left click and it wants to make another copy, so I finish by doing reset. Now these are individual elements, and the ones to the right are still cells. So that's some basics about it. Some cells are meant to be dropped, some cells are not meant to be dropped. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. See you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.